mandatory minimums for low-level nonviolent drug offenses. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests in New York. Anthony Papa is author of This Side of Freedom, Life After Clemency. He's an anti-drug war activist, painter and author. In 1985, Anthony Papa agreed to deliver an envelope of cocaine in a police sting operation in return for $500. His first, <clears throat> his first and only criminal offense cost him a 15-year-to-life sentence. In 1996, Papa won a sentence commutation from then-New York Governor George Pataki. In 2016, Papa received a pardon from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's believed to be the first person in New York State history to receive both a sentence commutation and a pardon. Um, Anthony Papa, what is your understanding of what the attorney general is calling for right now? Well, you know, Amy, I agree with Eric Holder. This is totally dumb on crime. Uh, to go back to a failed, a proven failed policy and to enact, uh, you know, the, the, tell prosecutors to convict people at the harshest, harshest possible sentence is totally wrong. I'll use myself as an example. You know, first time nonviolent offender, I was actually sentenced to 215 to life sentences under the Rockefeller drug laws of New York State, which was mandated by mandatory minimum sentencing, the same mandatory minimum sentencing laws that became uh, uh, in the federal system that now Sessions wants the prosecutors to use to sentence even low-level nonviolent drug offenders or even people who were addicted uh, to drugs to many, many years in prison. It's a proven fact that these law, the, this, this policy uh, wasted um, billions of dollars and, more importantly, um, many human lives were wasted in this action in the past.